All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and today we're going to be talking a lot about fair use and why it's important and why there's a new pretty major threat I would say to the idea of fair use here on YouTube and here on the internet. So before we even get any further in this video, I want to go ahead and do a refresher on what fair use is and what it entails and why it's so important to YouTubers like probably many of your favorite creators. If you're a fan of my channel, it's definitely huge to mine. Fair use is in layman's terms essentially the idea that you can use pieces of other people's content without using copyright in order to critique it or to make some sort of comedic sketch out of it, things like that, right? To use it in a purpose that's transformative in order to make a whole new piece of something out of just little bits and pieces of something else. So for instance, with like my videos, oftentimes I'll react to say someone's video, right? And instead of playing the whole 15 minute video, I'll play like two minutes of it in separate little clips that I'm kind of responding to or whatever. That's basically the concept of fair use right there. It's wildly important to the internet and to probably Probably many of your favorite YouTubers at this point, if they do any form of reaction content or if they respond to people's videos like that. It's honestly a very important concept and it's really allowed for YouTube to thrive in a pretty major way. Now, of course, over time, people have kind of mixed up the idea of what fair use is. They haven't really understood it. And there's even been lawsuits surrounding this entire thing. You may or may not remember back when H3H3 Productions had a pretty massive lawsuit with another creator over the use of content. That was a fair use argument. And of course, H3H3 ended up winning because this is something that that is legally defensible to use other people's content in fair use. Well, unfortunately, there's a new attack against fair use happening, and it's at the face of someone who's actually pretty popular. I don't know if you guys know who Brendan Schaub is. He was an MMA fighter and has now turned into a podcast host slash comedian. Well, he's actually suing a YouTuber, a pretty small YouTuber, actually, uh, over fair use, basically. And uh, if this lawsuit is successful, it would set a legal precedent that is against fair use, and it could be pretty destructive to creators and setting a legal precedent like that is not a good idea. Of course, H3H3's lawsuit in which they won with fair use has been set as legal precedent. This would essentially be the opposite of that if it wins. So like I said, Brendan Schaub has went from an MMA fighter to a comedian of sorts. Uh, I have to say, I don't really think Brendan is that funny. I've seen very limited amounts of his work, but from what I've seen, I, I just didn't find him funny at all, really. But that's honestly not important. What is important is what Brendan is doing and why it's important what he's doing. So Brendan is suing a smaller YouTuber for basically making fun of him, okay? Uh, this creator used pieces, from my understanding of the situation, used pieces of Brendan's content basically to crack jokes at him and to make fun of him, which, by the way, is allowed. It's literally one of the main reasons fair use is even a thing, is to basically make uh, comedic purposes out of the content. This is completely legally protected, and uh, the person, the small YouTuber here, should win this case, in all reality. If the law is to prevail in this situation, if Kyle common sense is to prevail in this situation. We really should see Brendan on the losing hand of this, but the argument isn't whether or not he has won, it's whether or not he's going to win. And unfortunately, considering that most courts are ran by boomers who really don't understand technology or the importance of this case, uh, this could really go either way. So the irony in all of this is once again, Brendan Schaub is a comedian, right? He tells jokes, that's what he's supposed to be doing at least. Once again, I don't find him funny, but it's definitely quite ironic that he's mad that someone was using using his content at his expense to make jokes, right? When he's a comedian. You would think if anyone on planet Earth understood the importance of fair use, why it's important and everything, you would think it would be comedians because they oftentimes will transform other people's work or something like that online in order to basically make their own content. And from what I know, I may be wrong about this, but Brendan himself has actually used other people's content in the past through his podcasts and whatnot to basically react to and to make fun of, which makes this entire case extremely fucking hypocritical. Okay, so that, that's really the, the key thing I've noticed in this entire thing. This lawsuit is just the epitome of hypocritical altogether. You have to have a pretty big, uh, like, lack of self-awareness in order to get yourself in a situation like this, I feel. Uh, comedians are usually pretty big proponents of fair use, but Brendan does not believe that the content was used under the guise of fair use, and he believes that it was basically him being violated with his copyright and whatnot, and he just doesn't agree with the case, which, to be honest with you, it it's not completely black and white when it comes to fair use. There definitely is a lot of different factors that really go into things to determine whether or not something is fair use. But in most of the situations where we've seen lawsuits like this, where someone is suing somebody else on the basis of fair use, I've noticed that in like 95% of those cases, the person suing doesn't really have a case. And in my opinion, it's kind of the same thing in this situation here. I'm pretty certain that, uh, that Brandon here is basically suing 
and is going to lose. At least in an ideal world, Brendan is going to lose for this situation. Because the way I see it and the way that most people who understand fair use would see it, you know, Brendan's basically just upset that he's getting made fun of. That's what it really looks like here. I really don't believe that he has any sort of issue with the content at all, other than the fact that he's being made fun of. You know, I feel like he's personally upset by the concept of being, you know, made fun of online in some way. Which is pretty weird because this guy has been in the public face for a long time, right? I mean, he was in the, he was fighting in MMA and everything before all this. He has his own podcasts and whatnot, and he runs productions and stuff outside of that. So you would think he'd know that online you're bound to get made fun of a little bit, or people are going to poke a little bit of fun at you. And even the fact that he's a comedian, that really adds on to everything. That really kind of seals the deal in a lot of different regards. It's hard for me to justify somebody being upset that they had jokes made at their expense and them going off and just, you know, copyright striking somebody, or in this instance here, even going as far as to sue them. Now, this has actually been a pretty major problem with fair use on YouTube for years now. There's been a lot of incidents like this where people are upset about content made about them or they don't like the person and they have a personal kind of fight with them and they just go off and copyright strike someone's video or they end up in a lawsuit like H3H3 or this situation. And in my opinion, it's one of the bitchiest things that you can do. Now, Brendan is someone who was renowned for his abilities to fight in MMA, but apparently he's so personally fragile that somebody making jokes about him online now makes him want to sue somebody so that that's pretty weird to me personally right like you're, you're able to do spinning head kicks and shit in the octagon but when somebody makes a no-no joke about you on the internet all of a sudden you back into a corner and start filing legal suits right that, that just i don't know something about that's weird to me so uh everything that kind of is going on here really more or less leads me to come to the conclusion that Brendan is kind of a is kind of a bitch. I mean, sure, he might be a great fighter, he may be a skilled fighter, but at the end of the day, dude, if a YouTube video is enough to get you this personally worked up that you're willing to go to court over it and you really don't have a legal case to make, then that just indicates kind of a bitch-made material to me, man. Like, I, I don't know, you are made of 100% scaredy cat. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dog? I don't know. I, I, the people make videos about each other online all the time, but it's different when you're in this situation, I guess. But I do want to add that the content creator that I'm defending here has been known for being into some controversies. There's been accusations of like domestic abuse and whatnot. So this isn't necessarily someone that is a perfect angel or anything like that. But personally, I find those kinds of details to be irrelevant to the situation at hand. Sure, this person has probably done some pretty fucked up things before and there's a lot of crazy accusations about them that would not make me want to support them as a person. But from creator to creator, I realize that this is an issue in which they're honestly the victim in, and I don't really think that it's responsible with my platform to just deny defending somebody because they did some other stupid shit. At the end of the day, in this case, this creator being sued didn't, in my opinion, do anything too wrong uh, in order to get sued here. So that's why I at least want to talk about it and bring the issue up. Now, why is this kind of case important to YouTube? Why is it important to creators like myself? So you have to think fair use is one of those things that are held over YouTubers heads quite often. Like in my situation, I rely on fair use quite a bit in order to make the content that I do. My channel would not exist without fair use. Most, if not virtually all of my most popular content that I've ever uploaded to this channel is based on taking clips of other people's content or reacting to it in some way. My game theory video, I reacted and used footage from the game theorists. It's always the video game's fault, not my bad parenting where I used clips of Dr. Phil. I used those in fair use. In my Minecraft is dead video, I used some clips from different people and whatnot from different stuff, so that was fair use. My career probably would not exist if fair use was not a thing, and that's why I'm always so quick to jump to its defense, because it's so important to the online ecosystem and especially to YouTubers. We need fair use policy to stand in order to make our best content. And it really opens up and allows for more discussion. And it's really just important to that element alone, not even just the fact that YouTubers need it. It's that a lot of uncomfortable or unnecessary quote-unquote decisions and conversations that are made are simply only made because fair use is a thing that protects people legally. And I personally would hate to see something so important disappear. Now, is this case, does it have the potential to destroy fair use? Well, to an extent, yes, it does. Let's say by some miracle here that Brendan Schaub wins this case. He beats this small YouTuber and, you know, it's determined that the creator didn't actually act in fair use. 
they basically were copyright infringement or whatever, right? Let's say that's the case, okay? Well, this legal precedent could be used widespread across the board in order to target other creators in court. For instance, if Brendan Schaub's case were to go through and he wins and it's determined that, you know, online creators who react like that or use small segments and clips of people's content are not actually participating in fair use, that would destroy a lot of YouTube channels and it would make a lot of YouTube content a lot harder to make. And it could even get to the point that if, I don't know, let's say I make a video on somebody and they don't like it, they could just sue me in court and say I wasn't using fair use and their entire legal basis could be, well, a judge ruled in favor of Brendan Schaub in this case, therefore legal precedent in recent memory is that fair use is this and not that, right? So you also have to think this would be a more recent decision than the H3H3 uh, case that has actually helped protect fair use over the years, which could really help sway public opinion and all kinds of different things, man. It could really have a pretty negative impact on the YouTube ecosystem. And in particular, it could even have a negative impact on Brendan himself. Brendan has used clips of other people's content in the past to talk about or react to in some way, shape, or form. So he would basically be prevented from doing this too. It really isn't a good decision to try and sue on this. If you get butthurt over a video, you know, I guess that's kind of understandable, whatever, right? But you don't need to take it to court like this. Now, from my understanding, the small YouTuber is going to stand up and fight Brendan in court and fight for fair use. I don't know anything more than that, really. It's honestly just a shitty situation that people shouldn't have to deal with. And it sucks that, honestly, so often you see people try to challenge fair use like this, and you see people abusing YouTube systems, basically in order to get back at one another, right? Oh, you made a video I don't like, or you made some jokes I don't like, cool. Well, I'll see you in court. Nice fair use. Like, that, that to me is just so stupid. And at the end of the day, man, it's just like, if you're gonna be a comedian, and you wanna tell jokes, and you wanna say funny things and stuff like that, then you have to be okay with it when it comes back around. That's what a lot of comedians are like, you know? They're just cool with it, because it's jokes and things like that. They, it's not that big of a deal. But Brendan is a special case. Not only is he not fucking funny whatsoever from any of his content that I've ever seen, from what I've heard, he's also been accused of stealing jokes in the past and basically just blatantly ripping off other people. And that's actually a pretty big thing in the uh, comedian community is joke stealing. That That's something that's just a no-no. I remember Carlos Mencia basically got called out for stealing jokes by Joe Rogan, I believe it was. And that literally ruined his fucking career. He was no longer a popular comedian after that because basically stealing jokes in the comedian industry is the equivalent of stealing the Krabby Patty secret formula if you run a restaurant, you know? It'd be the equivalent of like a rapper coming out with a song that's literally a direct song ripoff of another artist's popular song. Comedians are known for their fast, witty ability to come up with these jokes and to write, you know, clever shit, basically. And if you're a joke stealer or you have that reputation, that's not good for you in the comedian industry. So Brendan Shaw already has a really bad reputation with a lot of people. I don't really see this adding any sort of positive spin to that. So with that being said, though, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to optimus make sure to check out shop opti down below i just dropped a whole new merch line it would mean a lot to me if you guys could go check that out there's some cool stuff over there and with all that being said until my next video this is optimus well talking about brendan and signing out